The question that I most often read in any astronomy or astrophotography forum is, I need a telescope. Can you give me any recommendation? And there is only one correct answer to this question. And that is, it depends. It depends on a lot of factors. And in this video, we will not get to the point where I will tell you this is the right telescope for you. But we will get to a point where you know what the criteria are that fit to you and what type of telescope might fit. And that might enable you then to look at videos of Ed Ting, for example, who really goes in depth with certain telescope recommendations. Or you might ask a very specific question at a forum for recommendations. With that, let's get going. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So, grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So, I want to group your needs, your requirements into four different layers. And we start with the base one, which is also kind of the easiest one for you to judge, and that's your budget. So telescopes come in all sizes, and when I talk about size, I mean the size of your wallet. You might get a telescope for 50 bucks, and you might get a telescope for 10,000, 50,000 bucks. It's quite a stretch, and there's everything in between. And just to be clear, there is quite a correlation between how much you spend and how much you will actually see and be able to do with your telescope. With that, let's go to the second layer. Can you use your telescope in your backyard or your terrace, your balcony, in principle right at home? Or will you have to drive to a remote area? And the main point here to consider is weight. Because a good telescope might weight up to 100 or even 200 pounds. That's not something you want to put every night in your car, haul around and then reassemble it again. So as a rule of thumb, if you are not able to use your telescope at home and you really every time have to haul it around, probably your best go with a refractor. If you can use it from home, then you can go with something substantially heavier like the schmidt cassegrain for example. Now let's go to the third layer and that might be the most difficult for you to answer if you're really at the start of your hobby. And that is, will you use your telescope for visual astronomy only? meaning only looking with your own eyes through the eyepiece? Or are you also interested in astrophotography? It can be a maybe that you just like to start visual, but you don't want to exclude yourself from the astrophotography option. And it might be that you know already right away that's in principle what you want to do, astrophotography. So we have these three groups. And they might lead to very distinct groups of telescopes. And if you're wondering right now, so what should I answer here? Because you don't really know anything about astrophotography, it might be quite worthwhile to look at one or two videos about astrophotography to understand what it is and what it requires. I have some quite helpful videos about that on my channel. In addition to that, it also boils down again to level one, your budget. While when you go visual only, you only need the telescope and some eyepieces, in the case of astrophotography, you need tons of other materials, which are quite expensive. So if your budget is already stretched with the telescope, you might rather stay for the moment in this group. On the other side, if you have the opportunity, astrophotography is really an amazing hobby and will open the door to space to so much more than visual astronomy can. With that, we come to the fourth layer, which depends on a little bit on what you answered in level three. If you want to go visual only, there's two options. You can stay with a manual telescope, which means you have to find the stars yourself, or you can go with a go-to telescope where you can actually enter into the computer. I want to find Saturn or Sirius or Vega or whatever, and it will automatically go there and all you have to do is look through the eyepiece and enjoy the object. A go-to telescope will also track your object so that it always stays centered 
and you can just enjoy it and watch it as long as you want. While with a manual wand, you always have to readjust as the objects in the sky are slowly moving. So again, this goes a little bit down again to level number one, as so many things do, the money. Obviously, a manual telescope is much cheaper than a go-to telescope. But personally, I would recommend to you, if it is possible from your budget, take a go-to telescope. While some people will tell you that you learn the sky much better with a manual telescope where you have to find everything yourself, I personally find it highly frustrating and I rather enjoy the view than having to search painfully for an object. But that's personal taste. When we go to the middle group, maybe astrophotography but not sure yet, you still have the choice to choose an alt azimuth telescope or mount, or already go to an equatorial mount. The point here is that for good astrophotography, you need an equatorial mount, because while in alt azimuth, the object is tracked, the issue is that the sky doesn't go horizontal, but it goes in a curve. So if you're tracking an object horizontally, but the sky goes in a curve, the sky kind of turns through the night and you will still get for long exposures some star trails. That's why an equatorial mount tracks the object in a curve and so the sky stays always stable. So if you start with an alt azimuth mount and you switch later on to astrophotography, you can for SET, for schmidt cassegrain telescope, like the Celestron Next Star, you can buy a wedge, and with the wedge, you transform the telescope from Aldazimuth into an equatorial mount. For other telescopes, you might have to buy another mount. You can still keep the telescope, but you have to change the mount. If you are already buying an equatorial mount from the start, it makes you fully ready for astrophotography. On the other side, it's a little bit more difficult as a beginner to deal with an equatorial mount. And you might be better off or feeling more easy having an alt azimuth mount to start out with. So there's pro and cons on both sides. But as you can see, the question go to mount or manual is in this case not a question. If you even consider astrophotography down the road, you will always go with a go to mount. And might it just be for the purpose that your mount can actually track your object. Last but not least, if you're already sure you want to do astrophotography and you buy your telescope with this specific purpose, you still have one question to answer. And this is, are you more interested in deep space, nebulas, large objects in the sky, or are you more interested in planetary photography or in tiny little galaxies far, far away? This really determines the focal lengths of the telescope that you're buying, and it couldn't be more different. So even this might be a very difficult question for you to answer right now, it is a very, very crucial one, and you should really think about it, look at photos of both, and think about which is more appealing to you. It does not mean that a high focal length completely excludes you from nebula. There are smaller nebulas, you can use mosaics, and it also doesn't mean that a very wide focal length excludes you from planetary or galaxy photography, but they're just rather tiny then. And so it will definitely not be the best telescope for that purpose. So we have now six kind of groups up here. And I would like to show you now for each of these group, one to two telescopes. Don't take it as recommendations, take it as examples to give you an idea what would actually fit for each of these groups. And again, if afterwards you're interested in one or the other telescope I showed you, or other telescope within this group, please hop over to the channel of Ed Ting, and I put his channel um, in the description below. He's really the telescope man, and he can show you exactly what a telescope offers, the pro and the cons, and so on. To be completely transparent, I use telescopeexpress.de, a German telescope shop to show you these different telescopes. 
I have no affiliation with them. They don't even know that I use them, but it is actually my main supplier for all the telescope gear that I need and I can very much um, recommend them if you live in Europe. So let's start with the first group that you want to do visual astronomy and you're using a manual telescope. I have chosen two for you. This is the first one. It's an entry point refractor with 900 millimeters and even on an equatorial mount. It's aimed for kids, seven years and up, but also an adult could actually use it as an entry point telescope. It's lightweight and so it's easy to take with you and with around 140 euro it's really a bargain. You might encounter similar offers at a supermarket, at Costco, whatever. Please do not take them. This is trash. But if you go to a serious telescope retailer like Telescope Express, this might be a very good entry point. Now if you can spend a little bit more, I would recommend this 8 inch Dobsonian. When it comes to manual visual astronomy, there is probably no better price value than a Dobsonian. It has over three times the diameter of the refractor which I showed you before and can let in so much more light and you get so much closer to the planets, to the moon. The drawback of course is it's much heavier. Also there is practically no way of adding a go-to functionality to a Dobsonian and it's also really not made for astrophotography. Now having go-to mentioned, this is our next category. Still purely visual astronomy, but now with the go-to functionality. And for my personal taste, there's only one thing I would recommend. And these are schmidt cassegrain telescopes, be it from Mead, be it from Celestron. I'm more on the Celestron side. And I think the Celestron Next Star series is absolutely predestined for that. With visual astronomy, it's really the bigger the focal length, the bigger, bigger the diameter, the better. But that comes at a cost. So you can start with the Celestron Next Star 4 SE, which has a focal length of 1,300 millimeters, and it costs around 800 bucks. So we're talking double of what you before would have spent for the Dobsonian, but you have now the go-to functionality. If you would go with the same diameter as we had before with the Dobsonian, we're arriving at the 8 SE, and here we're talking about 1,700 bucks. So about four times what you would have spent on a Dobsonian. But these next star telescope, they're really a bestseller. They're really great for visual astronomy, but you can also kind of not optimally use them for astrophotography. So you have all your options open. Now let's go to these middle categories where you're saying, mm, at the moment I want to start with visual, but later on I might want to do astrophotography, which usually leads to that you will do some astrophotography. And I'll stay here a little bit in the Celestron realm as I'm really convinced about them, but I'm sure the mid line of the schmidt cassegrains is as good as well. So if you decide to go with the azimuth mount, one option could actually be the Celestron Next Star 8 SE as we've seen before. The issue with it is a little bit that this one arm makes it not very powerful and also a little bit inaccurate. So the better option here is to go with the CPC 800 of Celestron which has a fork mount, so two arms which hold it very steady. This one costs around 2,500 bucks, which is about 700, 800 bucks more than the ADSE. But they're extremely versatile, and if you add a wedge to this one, you really have a great tool for astrophotography. I do all my astrophotography exclusively with the CPC 800, which I modified. So let's go to the next option. What if you want to already take an equatorial mount so that you're ready if you eventually want to go into astrophotography? And funny enough, the same C8, which we already have encountered in the Next Star 8SE, which we have already encountered in the CPC 800, is also available in a package with an equatorial mount. And if you look at it, it's cheaper than the CPC 800. So to compare a CPC 800 with a wedge so that it's equatorial to this package, you pay a thousand bucks more for the CPC 800. So in this case, this must be 
the much better deal, right? And my answer would be, perhaps. You see, my point is, if you really want to go into astrophotography, even that package is still kind of suboptimal. It's not really what I would recommend to start with. And if you will decide not to go into astrophotography, then the equatorial mount makes it really unnecessary complex and it's not so easy to enter into astronomy and to stargazing with an equatorial mount just because of the kind of unusual motion it makes. So my point is a little bit, if you think you rather stick on the visual part and you want to have a very solid, good telescope to start there, then the CPC line is really great. And if you're already more on the side where you think you will most definitely go into astrophotography, then rather stick with me and look at the recommendations for astrophotography. But that does not mean that this is not a viable solution to go. So let's look now into what entry telescope you could choose if you for sure want to go into astrophotography. And if you decide you're interested in nebulas, in rather large things, even there you have the choice between very wide and just somewhere in the middle. If you want to go really wide, the probably most famous candidate here is the Red Cat 51. First of all, it looks amazingly cool. Second of all, it's rather compact, easy to take with you. Third, it has amazingly good optics. On the downside, it has a focal length of 250 millimeters. And that is about as much as your telephoto lens on your DSLR if you have one. So for my taste, it's a little bit too wide. But you see a lot of astrophotographers who swear that this is an absolutely great choice. If you don't want to go that extreme and you want to stay a little bit more narrow, a great candidate here is the Ascar FRA 500. So here you are, as the name says it, with 500 millimeters, which is already quite a little bit more zoomed in. You can still put a reducer in the back and get a little bit, I think, to about 350 millimeters. So you have a lot of options. This also enables you more to shoot some galaxies. It is a quintuplet with five lenses, so it's designed for astrophotography and will make brilliant pictures. It's obviously a little bit more heavy than the Red Cat. And most of all, it's more than double as expensive. And there's something which you have to be aware that we shouldn't compare apples with oranges. Because with all the telescopes before, we looked at a set of a telescope with a mount. But in these two examples, which I showed you now, this is only the telescope. And then you have to buy, in addition, an equatorial mount. For example, here, a Skywatcher EQ5, which costs you another 800 bucks on top. And this is about the cheapest solution that you have. So together, we are at about 1,600 bucks for the Red Cat, including the mount, and about $2,600 for the Ascar with the mount. And by the way, if you wonder what I mean with bucks, at the time this is recorded, the euro, the US dollar and the Swiss franc are all about at the same level currency-wise. So it can mean any of these three currencies. So last but not least, what if you want to go into astrophotography and you're mostly interested in planets? So remember, to shoot planets, we need as much as possible focal length. And so we're back here again by our Celestron. This time I chose a 9.2 inch version with an HD quality, which is made for astrophotography. And you can see this is quite expensive. That doesn't mean that there are other entry solutions where you can shoot planets, but this would really be kind of made for it. So this is the end of our journey on the search for your telescope. And what I hope that you got out of this is that you can go now to your forum of choice or to your retailer of choice and tell them, I have a budget of $2,000. My telescope will stand on my balcony, so it can be quite heavy. I'm interested in astrophotography, but I'm not so sure yet. I think an Aldazimuth mount would be good enough. What would you recommend? And if you go with such a story to your forum, to your retailer, you will get quite a good range of proposals of options of which you then can choose for. So whatever your choice will be, I hope that you have as much fun with it as I have with mine. 
And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Thanks a lot. And with that, clear skies and see you next time.